Hey everybody, welcome back to GR Research, where today we're going to talk about cable risers. Yes, cable risers. Why am I talking about cable risers? Because you guys keep asking me about them. You've seen some of my videos and you just happen to notice over my shoulders that there's something under our cables back there lifting them up off the ground. And you've asked me about them a bunch of times and... I finally said, look, I'll just shoot a video on it. So that's what we're doing. We're going to talk about cable risers. No, I'm not here to sell you cable cable risers. We don't sell cable risers here at GR Research. I'm not advocating that this is for everybody. But for those of you who want to know about it and know, want to know the real skivvy, the real truth, why do I have these in the system back here? Well, let's talk about that. First of all, let's, um, let's look at wh why are they in my system. It's Dave Elledge's fault. It's always Dave Elledge's fault. Dave is, is he's one of those guys that he is um, probably the sharpest guy that I know in audio when it comes to tweaks that really work. And when I say tweaks, I'm talking about things that involve power conditioning, noise reduction, room treatment, room control, you name it. He's worked in the recording industry for years, and he's kind of a master at it. He can go in and transform a studio and do things all on the power side, uh, all on the acoustic side, and he's, he's great at it. And every time he comes to me with something, I have to take it seriously because it never fails. He always transforms my system in one way or another. And so Dave was here. Dave was listening to my system and he was very pleased with what he was hearing. But then he says, Danny, why are your cables on the floor? I said, Dave, man, I don't know, man. I've, I've, I've played with some cable lifting stuff in the past and I didn't notice that much difference. He said, Danny, have you tried it with those speaker cables? No. <laughs> it's like I knew he had me. It's like just because it doesn't work on one type of cable or it didn't have much effect doesn't mean that it won't have an effect on a different type of cable or on a different kind of floor. And you got to try these things. So he said, let's try. I said, okay. So we went out to the shop and we found some, we were looking around out there for something we could make quick and dirty cable risers out of. And we grabbed some little cardboard boxes. We showed up in here. We set those up under the cables, turned the system back on, played music for about 10 seconds, and I could already tell it it made a difference, and it, it was a clear difference. It wasn't like it transformed the whole system or it was a huge revelation. It's subtle, but it's clear. I mean, it's undeniable. I know my system, and I could hear it. Just within a few seconds. And as the more I listened, the more I realized what was going on. And it, to me, sounded as if things within the sound stage and where things were in the sound stage become more focused, more solidified. Space between things within the sound stage became less fuzzy and more distinct. And just everything within that whole sound field became more focused. And it was clear as can be. I mean, there's no denying it. You didn't have to be an expert, trained listener to hear it. Everyone could hear it. It was plain as day. So um, then I realized, okay, Chris from Vinyl Attack's coming in a couple of days, and this is too big of a deal. It's too much of an upgrade to not have something under these cables. I can't go back to putting them on the floor when there's it makes such a notable difference to get them up off the floor. So um, I had to figure something out. And um, as you can see uh, from the footage, I, I spent several thousands of dollars and I bought the latest cryogenically treated cable risers from Tinker Audio. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, I had a revelation as I was thinking about what I could use and realized Tinker Toys would be great. We had a five gallon 
bucket of Tinker Toys in there that the grandkids play with, and I got into their Tinker Toys and made myself some quick down and dirty cable risers, and they worked great. Uh, the difference was not hard to pick out. It's what, not one of them things where you had to listen 10 times with 10 different types of material and try to decide, did you hear a difference? Did you not hear a difference? Just like that, you could hear the difference. So I'm uh, pretty happy with them at the moment. So yes, that's what you guys are seeing over my shoulders over here. So uh, Chris shows up from Vinyl Attack, and I didn't say anything about the Tinker Toys. And of course, it was pretty obvious he could see them. Uh, Ron Brené came over to, and um, finally Chris said, um, oh, he just had to ask something about those Tinker Toys. He just had to say something, and he did. And wanted to know if that really was a thing. And I said, well, let's find out if it's a thing or not. You tell me if it's a thing, basically. And so we listened to some music, and then I went over and kicked those cables down on the floor and played the same music again. He did not want it to be a thing. He did not want to have to go fooling with, raising his cables off the floor, and, and even even addressing it. It's It's almost ridiculous. In, in a way, because it just doesn't make a lot of sense in the minds of so many people that that would make a difference. He did not want it to make a difference. So there was no expectation to hear a difference. And he heard a difference. <laughs> he listened for just a few seconds. Within five or ten seconds, he pretty much said something to the effect of, dang, I did not want that to be a thing. He said, it's obvious. It's just, it was obvious. And... For Ron Bernay as well, for Hobbs, who works for me. Um, Hobbs and uh, Chris from Vinyl Attack both ordered Tinker Toys from their phones just you know, immediately after hearing the before and afters. We played with it a bunch. We put them back. We moved and we put them back. It was, it was amazing, uh, really, how much difference that stuff can make. And uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money to do that. You can make them out of almost anything. You want minimal contact with the cable, and you want them up off the floor. Now, does this work with every cable? Uh, no. It's going to be different with different types of cable and with different kinds of flooring. And I want to say this and make sure you guys understand, this isn't going to make a difference in every system. I'd say 80 or 90% of the systems out there, this isn't going to make any difference because the system just isn't there yet. There are... Too many other bottlenecks in the system. You've got, um, you've got a receiver as your source. You've got, um, you've got a budget level front end. You've got speakers that are loaded with electrolytic caps and iron core inductors. You've got your speakers up against a wall. You've got no treatment on your walls. You've got. There's a whole bunch of things that have to be in place. In order to make that really layered three-dimensional sound field, and then things like cables and cable risers begin to make noticeable differences once you've reached that level. So it's not for everyone, but it may be for some of our customers. It, it may be that you want to try it. A lot of our customers start on a journey, and by that I mean they purchase our product, they build one of our kits, and they realize, wow, this is a revelation. I'm hearing things I've never heard before that I never heard with my old speakers. This is crazy. This is great. I love it. And they send me pictures of the room. And then I give them feedback and say something like, why don't you try pulling your speakers about three or four more feet out into your room and hear what that does, and then tell me if you hear that difference. And, of course, they get excited because... Now the speakers are out far enough in the room to create a sound stage. Then they come back to me and say, wow, that was great. I can't believe how much difference that made. What do I do next? Okay, next, uh, how about treating that bare wall there? And we get, get them, help them get them set up with some room treatment and things like that. So they begin a journey, and everybody is somewhere along that journey, even, even myself. I'm always finding something that's a next improvement, just like cable risers. Um, which I knew there was something to be had there, but I just didn't want to do it, you know? And so I'm glad I did. And it's amazing how much difference that makes. So 
everybody's, you know, like I said, somewhere on that journey, and you may be to the point where it's worthwhile trying, or you may not be to that point where it's worthwhile trying. It, you know, it, it's different for everybody. Um, just like a lot of those guys uh, that I mentioned about a month or so ago that do YouTube reviews, a lot of those guys they're they're on that journey also, and they're not. Some of them are just getting started, and they're not that far down the path yet. And for them, cable risers aren't really going to make any difference because they've got too many other bottlenecks in their systems. And so I want to encourage those guys and all of you out there to do all of the other things that are that are bigger, especially room treatment and room placement and all that kind of stuff. Do those things first, and then things like cable risers and stuff might make sense for you or might be worth trying, especially if it doesn't cost anything like me. I just went and robbed a bunch of Tinker Toys out of the kid's box of tinker toys so um yeah why not so next question then everybody's going to say is what what's really going on there why is why is getting them off the floor making such a difference well um the signal that's transferred from your source to your speaker is not just that's not just a piece of wire wire is not wire and i know this is going to make the flat earth guys heads explode and they're already, before even reaching to this point in the video, they're already commenting on how I'm trying to sell you snake oil. Which is funny because I'm not selling any of this stuff. I'm giving you knowledge for free. But that's that's what's going to happen. It's probably already happened right now. Uh, this far into the video. So, wire is not wire. There's a whole lot of properties about it that affect the signal transfer from one into the other that really... Don't have anything to do with the wire. It's it's the dielectric material that's on it. It could be the geometry of the wire, whether it's side by side, whether it's spiral wound, whether it's braided like this stuff. Um, there's a whole lot of things that come into play that all affect the signal transfer. Uh, just like this cable, this is our 24 braid cable. This is how we get it. And as you notice, all of the wiring is run like this. It's braided, tightly braided. Well, we open it up and we put a, a half inch diameter cotton rope through the center of it, and that converts it from all of the uh, braids length like this to now the braids are laying like this. And the counter, uh, they're crossing each other at more of a right angle, and that causes a lot of cancellation of a lot of the higher frequency noise that could be in the system. I know that's freaking people out as well that I'm trying to put that across to you but that's what's going on even electrically if we measure this same exact cable before putting the rope through and then after putting the rope through it changes the property of the cables that we can measure we're changing the inductance we're changing the capacitance of the cable by putting the rope through the center that does change the properties of the cable it does change how it sounds so yes it changes um and we found that cotton core rope has less effect than some polyester ropes and things like that. It has less tendency to uh, hold a, an electrical charge. And what do we mean by holding electrical charge? Even the dielectric material that's on here will hold an electrical charge. It's measured as a dielectric constant. So all materials have a dielectric constant. It means it's how much electricity they tend to store versus air in a vacuum. Um, materials like PVC, which is what's most often coated on speaker cables, a lot of this is, is PVC jacketed on some of this cable here, um, has a dielectric constant of somewhere between three and four, whereas a cable like this with polyethylene or something that's Teflon jacketed may have a dielectric constant of somewhere between two and two and a half. So less than half of what PVC is. PVC tends to store or hold more of an electric charge. Um, same way with the different ropes. It's All material is like that. You can, you can excite the molecules and atoms in anything and cause a difference in the charge. Um, just like scooting across the carpet with your feet, then you reach over with your finger and you touch your friend's earlobe, you send a little electric shock that was built up from static electricity that you you created by rubbing your shoes or your feet across the carpet, but it transferred all the way through your body 
and then from your finger to your buddy's earlobe. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing goes on here. It's like taking a balloon. You take a balloon and you rub it on your shirt. You're building up a static charge. Now it sticks on the wall. You rub it in your hair. The static charge changes everything and your, your hair stands up. It's easy to transfer those static charges. Even using a latex balloon, you can put a charge into a latex balloon. So absolutely, you can put a charge in the dielectric material that's on the wire. Now, there's a lot of guys that will say, okay, maybe so, but that doesn't affect the electricity running through the wire. Yes, it does. Absolutely, it does. And some of these wires may have um, PVC jacketing on each wire. Then there's something that, that goes all around those. Then there's another PVC jacket. You may even have uh, an aluminum shield or a, some type of a braided shield that goes around it. And all of that stuff really holds a charge. So it could be the type of material or type of speaker cables you're using is such that no matter where you put them or what you do with them, there's going to be a residual charge that's building up inside the cable itself that you just can't get away from. Whereas some of this stuff that we do here, it's got a thin um, dielectric material over it that's polyethylene and there's nothing else over it. So it does not hold or build up a lot of that static electricity or static charge like a lot of other cables do and that's one of the other reasons this cable sounds as good as it does. We've even noticed if you put TechFlex across it and you cover it with a colored TechFlex, now that's storing a little bit of a charge and that's affecting the signal as well. So it doesn't sound the same when you put TechFlex on it. I know I've had guys say, can I put TechFlex on this? You can, but it comes with a penalty. It won't sound as good. We've even noticed that properties within the dielectric material that change the colors of the material also changes the way it sounds. Whereas some colors have carbon in them in order to make them black, whereas some colors may have iron oxide in them in order to make them red. All of those properties within the dielectric material change the dielectric constant of that material, change the way it sounds. I know that sounds crazy but we've done it many times and we've listened and sure enough it makes a difference and so when you when the cable is laying on the carpet that carpet and that all that it's laying on is part of the cable basically so it's it's transferring a charge into that carpet and from that magnetic field and it is affecting the signal transfer of the cable now Different types of carpet may be very different, and different speaker cables are completely different, and your mileage may vary. So for us, getting some of this up off the floor made a big difference. Now, if you have a hardwood floor, it may not make any difference. Like I said, 80 or 90% of the systems out there may not make any difference. But is it really a thing? It really is a thing, and it's undeniable. And if you don't believe us, come on over and listen. We won't trick you in any way. We'll just let you listen and let you hear for yourself. And it it could be at some point, maybe something like cable risers will make a difference in your system. And you don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on some audiophile grade, something or another that some company's selling you for a lot of money. You don't need that. You just need something that has very little contact area on the cable and something that'll get them about four inches or more off the floor and that's it and if you're to that point you want to give it a try go out there and give it a try you got nothing to lose tinker toys are cheap <laughs> and there's probably a lot of other things out there even cheaper you can get some old scrap pieces of cardboard fold them into a little tp cut a little groove in it for the cable to sit on you can make them out of nothing find out if it works for you how about that so hope i answered you guys questions on cable risers i know it seems it seems crazy but it's real if you got any other questions throw them out there can't wait to see your comments and all you guys who are in total disbelief i promise it's a thing it's a real thing and uh chris at vinyl attack didn't want it to be a thing either but he knows it's a thing now <laughs> we all know it's a thing when you hear it so that's it for this episode um 
I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit the subscribe button. And that's it for this one. See you in the next one.